Parker, and we own our voices. <laughs> the title of our scene is Long Live King Richard. Richard. Yes. <laughs> of Buckingham. My gracious sovereign. Give me thy hand. Thus I, by thy advice and thy assistance, is King Richard seated. But shall we wear these glories for a day, or shall they last, and we rejoice in them? Still in them, forever let them last. <laughs> Buckingham, now do I play the touch. Young Edward lives. So think now what I would speak. Say on, my loving lord. Ah, it's a consequence <laughs> that Edward still should live. True noble prince. Cousin, thou wast not going to be so dull. Shall I be plain? I wish the bastard's dead, and I would have it suddenly performed. So what sayest thou now? Speak suddenly and be brief. Give me some little breath. So pause, dear lord, before I positively speak in this. I will resolve you here and presently. The king is angry. See? He gnaws the lip. <laughs> I will converse with iron-witted fools and unrespective boys. None are for me that look into me with considerate eyes. High-reaching Buckingham grows circumspect. Boy! Yes, my lord. Knowest thou not any whom corrupting gold would tempt unto a close exploit of death? I know a discontented gentleman whose means match not his haughty spirit. Gold were as good as twenty orators and will, no doubt, tempt him to anything. What is his name? His name, my lord, is Tyrell. A partner of the man. Go! Call him hither. Kate! My lord! Rumor it abroad that Anne, my wife, is very grievous sick. I say again, give out that Anne, my queen, is sick and like to die. About it, for it stands me much upon to stop all hopes whose growth may damage me. I must be married to my brother's daughter, or else my kingdom stands on broken glass. Murder her brothers and then marry her. Is thy name Tyrell? James Tyrell, the most obedient subject. Art thou indeed? Prove me, my gracious lord. Erest thou resolved to kill a friend of mine? Please you, though I I'd rather kill two enemies. Why, then thou hast it! <laughs> two deep enemies! Foes to my rest and my sweet sleep's disturbers are they that I would have thee deal upon. Durell, I mean those bastards in the tower. If you give me open means to come to them, then I shall rid you of your fear of them. Thou singst sweet music. Hark, come hither, Durell. Go by this token, rise and lend thy ear. There is no more but so. Say it is done, and I will love thee and prefer thee for it. I'll dispatch it straight. My lord, I have considered in my mind the late request that you did sound me in. Well, let that rest. What says your highness to my just request? I do remember that Henry the Sixth did prophesy that Richmond should be king. When Richmond was a little peevish boy, a king, perhaps, perhaps. May it please you to resolve me in my suit. Thou oh, troubles me. I am not in the vein. And is it thus? Repays he my deepest service with such contempt? May I indeed for this? Oh, let me think on Hastings and be gone to Brecknock while my fearful head is on. Scene.
know no rules of charity, which renders good for bad, blessings for curses. Villain, thou knowest nor law of God, nor man, nor beast so fierce, but know some touch of pity. I would be complex. <laughs> I would be cool. They say I played the field too much before I found someone to commit to. And that would be okay for me to do. Every conquest I had made would make me more of a boss to you. <laughs> Thou mayest be damned for that wicked deed. He was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The better for the king of heaven that hath him. He is in heaven, where thou shalt never come. Let him thank me, that hope to send him thither. For he was fitter for that place than earth. And thou unfit for any place but hell. Yes. One place else, if you will hear me name it. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. And I'm so sick of them coming at me again. Because <laughs> if I was the man, then I'd be the man. I'd be the man. That was the cause and most accursed effect. Your beauty was the cause of that effect. Your beauty, that which did haunt me in my sleep. So I under undertake the death of all the world. So I might spend one hour in your sweet bosom. These nails should rend that beauty from my cheeks. These eyes could not endure such beauty's wreck. You should not blemish it if I stood by. I would I were to be revenged on thee. There's a quarrel most unnatural. To wish revenge upon him who loveth you. There's a quarrel just and reasonable to be revenged on him who slew my husband. They say husband. Put in the work. They wouldn't shake their heads and question how much of this I deserve. What I was wearing, if I was rude, could all be separated from my good ideas and power moves. Teach not thy lips such scorn, for they are made for kissing, lady, not for such contempt. <laughs> if thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, lo, here I lend thee this sharp pointed sword. Though I wish thy death, I will not be thy executioner. Then bid me kill myself, and I will do it. I have already. Speak it again, and even with the word, that hand which for thy love did kill thy love, shall for thy love kill a far truer love. To both their deaths thou be accessory. I would I knew thy heart. It is figured in my tongue. I fear me both are false. Then never man was true. I'd be a fearless leader. I'd be an alpha type. When everyone believes you, what's that like? How safe to wear this ring. Grants me this boon. Tis more than you deserve, but since you teach me how to flatter you. Pretend I have said farewell already. And I'm so sick of them coming at me again. Because if I was a man, I'd be the man. I'd be the man. Woo!